Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our worship service this morning. We give a special welcome to our visitors. If you're new in the Springfield Clark County area or looking for a new church home, we invite you to make St. John your new church home. This being a non communion Sunday, we have <coughs> an old fashioned bulletin, meaning you have to turn all the pages in the book instead of all the liturgy being printed out in the bulletin for you. So we begin by turning to page 94 to the order of confession and forgiveness as we prepare our hearts and minds to worship. So I ask that you turn to page 94 and invite those who can do so without difficulty to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, clean the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and have unfair ourselves. We have sinned against you and God worthy of thee by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. So we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts. Through faith. <coughs> Amen. We now begin our worship with Wash, O God, our sons and daughters, hymn number 445 in the back of the worship. Hymn number 445. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Our opening hymn is Wash, O God, Our Sons and Daughters. It's written by Ruth Duck. She was born in 1947. And this hymn is in honor of the baptism of our Lord. We're celebrating the baptism of our Lord today. This is January the 11th, 2015. St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. We're at the corner of Wittenberg and Columbia. We're happy to have you join us anytime in person so you can worship God with us. We are happy that you are watching us on YouTube. And we ask you to share this with others. Share the gospel. It's a method of sharing the gospel. Opening hymn, Wash, O oh God, Our Sons and Daughters.
Please turn to page 203 in the front of your worship book. Page 203. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and a communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Today and the theme is the baptism of our Lord. This morning, our first reading is from Genesis chapter 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the water. <coughs> then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord.
replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, And to what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling people to believe in the one who is to come after him, <coughs> that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Pastor John Pollock is now reading the scripture. This is a gospel acclamation. The words of Peter and all of our liturgy is strictly Bible based. Special music by the choir, directed by Vicki Perks, St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Today is designated the baptism of our Lord. And we read St. Mark's account of Jesus coming to John the Baptist and being baptized. St. Mark gives us the scale down version or cliff notes version of Jesus' baptism. Because when we read about it in some of the other Gospels, we read how when Jesus came to John, that John at first refused to baptize Jesus. And saying, you sh I should be baptized by you, not me baptizing you. And Jesus says these important words. He says, let it be so for, to fulfill all righteousness. Let it be so to fulfill all that, that my Father has commanded. And one of the things that God had commanded that was the Messiah... The anointed one, his son, would identify completely with we human beings. And so he, by his baptism, Jesus is identifying with us. He's identifying with our experience. He is identifying with everything that we go through. Today also is the church telling us that there is a transition taking place. That we are now leaving behind the celebration of Christmas. We're leaving behind that celebration of the birth of Jesus in the tent city of Bethlehem that we are putting into celebrating the shepherds being the first to hear the good news as the angels proclaimed it to them, signifying the fact that the Messiah whom the Jewish people had been expecting had indeed arrived. We bring to an end the celebration of those strangers from the east who come to see the baby Jesus and give him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, which illustrates the fact that the Messiah of God, the chosen one, the anointed one, was not just for the Jews, but that he was for the Gentiles as well, a gift to the entire world. Now Jesus is an adult. His baptism inaugurates his public ministry. Now the lessons in the weeks ahead we will read of that first year of Jesus' ministry, of how he went about gathering his disciples and gathering followers and performing miracles and proclaiming and revealing what God is really like through his actions and teachings. So now Jesus is an adult and has been baptized, and it is a perfect opportunity for us to stop and to consider what does our baptism mean? The majority of us gathered here this morning, I know there's some exceptions, but the majority of us were baptized as infants or as very young children. And so we don't really remember our baptism. We remember our confirmation. After going through two or three years of instruction, we stood before the congregation and the pastor. In some cases, the bishop might have been there as well, and we reaffirmed our baptismal vows. We claimed for ourselves that we were claiming these baptismal vows that our parents had spoken for us so many years before. But probably since then, we have not really thought about our baptism or why it is important. We probably haven't thought about what our baptism means to our daily life. And so on this observance of the baptism of our Lord, it gives us the perfect background to examine what does our baptism mean? Why is it important? Why should we remember it each and every day? And so as we hear of the baptism of Jesus, as we read it, it brings to us several important lessons. The first is that by being baptized, no matter your age, but by being baptized, you are acknowledging the fact that you are a sinner. You are acknowledging the fact that you cannot be perfect in this life. That no matter how hard you try to be good, you're always going to fail somewhere down the line. That no matter even if you withdraw yourself into a disciplined community of faith, or even if you withdraw into the mountains by yourself, or the forest by yourself, or out in the desert by yourself, you still are going to sin and fall short of the glory of God. 
You still are not going to be perfect. No matter how many things you give up. And so be baptized. What our baptism means is we acknowledge the fact that we are a sinner. We acknowledge the fact that just one sin, no matter how tiny it might be, <coughs> that one little bitty sin separates us from God. That sin puts a gulf between us and God, a gulf that we cannot cross. Our baptism says we recognize the only way we can go across that gulf, the only way that separation can end, is through God's Messiah, God's anointed one, Jesus Christ. We are acknowledging the fact we need a Savior. We are acknowledging the fact that we are sick. And that we give thanks to God for sending us the physician, Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. When we are baptized, we are acknowledging what we refer to as the fall. That's Genesis 3. Our first parents are in paradise. Everything is wonderful. They get to walk with God. Every day, God walks with them in the garden. They're able to speak to God the way we speak to each other. And then old Satan comes along. Satan tempts the wife. And then the husband, they sin. And now they must be driven out of paradise. Now they no longer can converse with God in the garden and walk with him like they did before. Now there is a separation between them and God that somehow must be healed because they cannot do it themselves. So God begins first with the old covenant and then comes to the new. With that fall comes what is referred to as original sin, meaning that every person born is born with this original sin attached to them, the sin of our first parents, that sin that we cannot scrub away, we cannot wash away, we cannot purify, we cannot exterminate it. There's only one way original sin leaves us in that is through the waters of baptism. So once baptized, we now begin that journey of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ who washes away our sin, who through his death upon the cross paid the debt of sin that we owe so that that gulf can close, or that you can walk across that gulf on the cross of Jesus Christ. So your baptism is important because you're, wrecking, you're saying you recognize that you are sinful. You're recognizing the fact that you can't earn salvation. That no matter how many rules, rituals, laws, regulations you perform, it's still not good enough because one mistake erases all that. So we must throw ourselves upon the grace of Jesus Christ. And your baptism means that you are throwing yourself on that grace of Jesus Christ. Acknowledging your sinfulness. Acknowledging your need for that great physician. So that you can be reconnected with God. So that you can be reconnected with our Heavenly Father. So that we do not suffer wrath or condemnation. The second thing that Jesus' baptism teaches us about ourselves and our own baptism is that with Jesus' baptism, it shows that he's the Savior. It shows that he is the way of our salvation. The second thing is that our baptism says that we are confessing faith in Jesus Christ. That word faith, similar to the word we see in the New Testament, believe mean to entrust your life to someone, to have confidence in someone, to place your life in their hands. Your baptism is saying you are placing your life in the hands of Jesus Christ. Your baptism is telling you you're entrusting your life to Jesus Christ. Your baptism means that you have total confidence in Jesus Christ and what he's done. It says you are confessing your faith in Jesus Christ as proclaimed in the Gospels and as confessed in the Nicene Apostles and Athanasian Creed. You are saying that you believe that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, was died, buried, on the third day rose again, 40 days later ascended to death. 
the heavens, where he comes again to judge the living and the dead. This is what you're confessing. Now, there's a lot of people in the world who tell you that they believe in Jesus. They believe in Jesus as a great teacher. They believe in Jesus as a great moralist. They believe in Jesus as a great ethicist. They believe in Jesus as a prophet, along with a whole bunch of other prophets. But they don't believe in Jesus Christ as Savior. They don't believe Jesus Christ washes away their sin with the blood he shed on the cross on that first good Friday. They do not believe that it's through Jesus that we have early access to God. When you are baptized, you are saying you believe in Jesus Christ as proclaimed in the doctrine of the church. He was more than a teacher. He was more than a moralist. He was more than an ethicist. He was more than just another prophet and a long line of prophets. He was the Son of God. He was, is the Savior of the world. We confess and believe and cling to when he tells us he is the way, the truth, and the life. And that no one comes to the Father through him. We believe that he is not a way, a truth, a life, a way, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, people often ask, especially nowadays in our pluralistic society where we're becoming more aware of people of different religions and so forth being among us, well, what about the good Buddhist, the good Hindu, the good Muslim, the good Jew that never is given the chance to believe in Jesus Christ and they live their religion out to their fullest and try to follow everything they're supposed to do? What happens to them? It's not my place to say what happens to them. That's God's business. As Jesus said, with God, nothing is impossible. And so... God <coughs> let them enter into heaven. That's God's will. That's what God has a right to do. What we are called to do is to preach and proclaim and share that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. Because through the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is no permanent. There's no bargaining. There's no debate. There's simply God's grace in Jesus Christ. Your baptism is saying you confess that Jesus Christ is saved. That Jesus Christ is Lord. And that's what his baptism shows. Because as Jesus is baptized, as we read in St. Mark, he says, As Jesus came out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit descending like a dove on him, and a voice came from heaven. You are my Son, the Beloved. The word Beloved means the Chosen One. With you I am well pleased. With you I approve. With you I take pleasure. And with you I have great joy. Why? Because you are fulfilling my plan of salvation. So Jesus' baptism tells us he's a Savior. Our baptism tells us we confess him as Savior. His baptism tells us he was sent by God. He's God's only Son. God sent him into this world so that those who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. Our baptism says we believe every bit of that totally and completely. And our baptism tells us because we confess and believe in Jesus Christ, we do not sit back and nitpick the Gospels to death. Trying to say this didn't happen or that didn't happen or John disagrees with Mark or Matthew disagrees with Luke or whatever. Our baptism says we trust in Jesus Christ. Trust he is the Savior of the world. We trust that His grace enables us to enter the kingdom of heaven. We profess that His death upon the cross washes our sins so they be like scarlet, washes us as white as snow. The third thing that our baptism means, the third thing that we should recall about our baptism <coughs> is that through baptism, in the waters of baptism, what are united with the word? That with those words we become a child of the heavenly Father. That in the waters of baptism, God adopts us as his own. Now we don't live in the Roman Empire. We live 
in 21st century America where, whether we want to admit it or not, in some circles, among some people, those who are adopted are kind of looked down upon as being second class. They're not actually the blood kin of that person, so yeah, they're a little different than we are. We actually <coughs> created our money and debt. Well, the Roman Empire wasn't like that. Roman Empire adoption was the same as being born by the parents that adopted them. Adoption in the Roman Empire meant you were full and equal with any siblings you might have from a family that has adopted you. Adoption in the Roman society meant whatever your past was, it no longer existed. You weren't that person back then. You are now who you are by whom you've been adopted. And of course, as I tell you, always when we talk about this, is the most easy example is the movie Ben Hur. When Judah Ben Hur sentenced to death in the galleys of Rome to spend his life rowing the Roman battle wagons, he saves the Roman naval commander Quintus Arius. Quintus Arius had lost his son. He adopts Ben Hur, and in Roman society, nobody knows that Judah Ben Hur was a galley slave since the there because he supposedly tried to assassinate the new governor of the Roman province of Judea. If you're familiar with the story, you know it wasn't, it was a towel. A towel was loose on the roof, and they put their hand on it and slid and hit the governor. The governor didn't even die, but his old friend was selling to prove a point that he was Mr. Tough Guy in the area, condemns the family, went with the mother and sister to prison for life. Ben Hur to the gallows. Once Quintus Arius adopts him, he is the full son of Quintus Arius, entitled to all that Quintus Arius has, to all of his honors, all of his property, all of his money, everything. He's not looked down upon him, but he's the adopted son. He's looked up as the full, complete heir to the fortune of Quintus Arius. And that is the way it is in baptism. God transforms us into a new person takes us from being a sinner in the hands of an angry God worthy of condemnation and makes us a child of the Heavenly Father, an heir to everything that Jesus Christ has won for us through his suffering and death on the cross, making us a brother and sister to Jesus Christ. That is why what your baptism means, and that's why it's important, because God has claimed you for his own. Now, other people may disregard you, other people may not care about you, but God will always love you. Jesus' baptism shows us he's God's son, and as God's son, he gives to us his grace so that we might be his own and live under him in his kingdom. Now, at the time I was in seminary, there began a bunch of rebel rousers in the church who were saying, oh, you shouldn't use the term father in referring to God. There are people who had lousy fathers who grew up, and their fathers were mean, or their fathers deserted them, or whatever, and so saying God is a father might cause them not to be able to relate to God. And so you need to just talk about God as, as God, as God the Creator. Of course, in the feminists, they said, well, no, God should be labeled as God the mother. Well, people didn't have bad mothers. People didn't have mothers that ran out. I know a lot of people had that happen. My daddy, I, I've told you before, my daddy was the youngest of three kids. He had an older brother and an older sister. Sister was the oldest. My daddy's daddy was a drunk. He'd been in the Army during World War I. Got out of the army as a captain. He'd get drunk and rejoin the army. My grandma had to go down to Fort Knox and drag him back home. <laughs> Tell her, you know, the army. He, he was drunk. He didn't know what he was doing. Finally, when my dad was only five years old, his drunk father ran out on him. Never showed him anything. My daddy and his mom and my grandma and my aunt and 
you would have been my uncle had he not been killed in Guadalcanal. Moved to Iowa to live with some relatives on their farm for a while, then they moved to Indianapolis and they moved back to Louisville. Dad was basically raised by his mother. Dad had no problem with God as father. Because he knew he was talking about God, he wouldn't talk about a human father. He had no problem with loving the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. And that God the Creator was his father, who loved him through his faith in Jesus. And that's why our baptism is important. It takes us from the doldrum of daily life where we may have a bad parent and brings, lifts us into the spiritual realm of a loving God, a loving Father <coughs> who loved us so much he sent his only son to suffer that horrible death on the cross to pay the debt of sin that we owe so that we might be his and live under him in his kingdom. And so our baptism tells us we are a child of the Heavenly Father, and there is no one that can take that away from us. When the Nazis threw Dietrich Bonhoeffer in prison, that didn't keep Dietrich Bonhoeffer from being a child of God, an heir to the kingdom, a brother of Jesus Christ. When the Nazis finally executed Dietrich Bonhoeffer on April 9th, 1945, that didn't keep Dietrich Bonhoeffer for being a child of the Heavenly Father. What it did was usher him into the presence of his Heavenly Father, into that place prepared for him by Jesus Christ himself. And so as we face the changes and challenges of life, it's important that we remember our baptism because it assures us that we are God's child. It assures us that God loves us, God cares for us, and that God has sent us his Son so that even if the world is bad, we still have that promise of everlasting life with those who've gone before us in the faith that we will one day cross that far side bank of Jordan to be reunited with him for all eternity. So your baptism is not something you should just dismiss as something that happened years ago. But it's something you should remember every day. Remember every day so you remind yourself that you are a sinner in need of salvation. That you can be reminded that you are indeed have confessed your faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And to remind yourself, especially when you feel dead, that you're a child of the Heavenly Father. And that is a relationship that can never be broken except by you yourself. That neither height nor depth nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation could separate us from that love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, let us celebrate our own baptism. And let us remember what that baptism means. And how important it is and how blessed it is to truly be a child of the Heavenly Father. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's that you turn to page 105 at the front of your worship book. And again, I invite those who can do so without difficulty to please stand as we confess our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Lutheran Profession of Faith and the Apostles' Creed. Say it with us as you're watching on YouTube. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Please.
Singleton and Helen Wallace are the ushers and they will be coming forward to receive the offering plates from the Acolyte. This is January 11th, 2015. We're honoring the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you anytime to come worship with us. We miss you. We love you. We welcome you anytime you're in, in our area or if you live close by, if you're able, come and worship with us. I'm sure that this is a blessing to those who can't worship, can't come in person because of illness or other reasons. We welcome you to watch anytime to share this ministry with others. As we proclaim Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we ask you to ask him to come into your heart. It's every day with Jesus. It's sweeter than the day before. We love him more and more. He saves and keeps us, and we're living for him. You can live for him and experience his presence, worship him as we're asked in our Holy Bible to do so. Our opening hymn this morning, the music was from the Sacred Harp. This is a method of printing musical notes so that people can sing in close harmony. It's used in the mountainous areas of the United States. It's a beautiful sound that we had this morning at the opening hymn, the Sacred Harp. Watch now as the ushers are coming forward. The acolyte will receive the offering plates. We invite you to come worship with us, Springfield, Ohio, St. John's Lutheran Church. Church, Springfield, Ohio. This is January 11th, 2015. <coughs> the baptism of our Lord.
Thank you for watching St. John's broadcast on cable. We invite you to listen to this service on cable. We invite you to share this with others. We invite others to have Jesus come into your heart. Of course, your Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Have Jesus with you, God with you, maker of the universe every day. And we'll all be in eternal life together. Our church offers a Christian school program for ages three and four, nursery and pre-K. For more information, call the school office. 937-325-4311. That's 325-4311, the Christian school. I hope and pray that God will continue to bless you, maker of the universe. Come and receive baptism, confirmation, call our church office. We want God to keep you, bless you this day and every day. We pray for you. Continue to pray for us and our YouTube ministry. We're happy to bring you this service. We're happy to have you with us. We'd like for you, if you're able, to come sit with us in the pews, worship God. We love you, we need you, we want you, and we're offering a service. We're offering food is one of the things we do, and the, we offer uh, the ministry of the outreach pantry, and anything we can do for those in need in our neighborhood. We ask you to call a church office and volunteer. We'd love to have you volunteer to Follow God's word, follow God's ministry, love God, confess, repent, love God, love your neighbor. I'm your announcer, Dr. Sally Abbott, and your videographer is Linda Fox.